For more on all things gold, let's bring in Sprott's John Champalia. He is the firm CEO. John, great to have you with us. Great to be back. I guess Costco shoppers are buying gold, but it's really central banks <laughs> that are doing most of the buying here. And you see that trend continuing? Yeah, we've seen a, a real meaningful shift, I would say, over the last uh, 18 months or so, where central banks around the world are really starting to increase their percentage of gold as part of their foreign reserves. China is clearly leading the way there. They, they have a vora voracious appetite to add more gold. We think this is part of a de-dollarization trend that's going on. But it's not just China. We've seen banks, uh, central banks in Turkey, Singapore, uh, as, as well as Poland, um, been pretty big buyers of gold over the last two years. Do you think that the gold miners need to catch up? And do you think they'll catch up um, to the degree where it'll match the rise that we've seen in gold? Or do you think the central bank forces are so strong that it, it makes the physical asset uh, more advantageous? Yeah, well, we, we often will tell our clients that, you know, you have to think about gold and gold miners in two different buckets. Gold has a very unique set of attributes that it brings a portfolio. And clearly, it's, it's acting as a financial asset for these central banks around the world. Gold miners obviously um, provide a lot of operating leverage and optionality to a higher gold price. And historically, in bull markets, they have outperformed. Now, the last couple of years, I would say they've lagged. And that's just really because there's been a, a very strong underpinning of gold buying support by central banks. And we haven't seen that same kind of support from institutional and retail investors for gold stocks. Part of that was because I think profit margins were under pressure as inflation had uh, eroded some of their profitability. But we definitely in the last six weeks or so have seen gold stocks, I think, perform much better. And I think that's a very healthy sign that there's some, some appetite returning. Hey, John, it's Tim. Thanks for joining us. I guess uh, the institutional uh, you know, part of this move, I think, also is something that's really should be emphasized because you know, spot price in gold is ultimately what analysts do and, and create a lot of their, their models for. And we started to see almost mechanically you have to see upgrades even for miners based upon this. But but get back to, again, the, the, the core investors that, that you know, been following Sprott forever and invest in your funds. Seems to me uh, this gold move is so underrepresented by institutions. Can you speak to that? Yeah, you raise a really good point. Uh, I would say that overall, if you take a look at how gold is positioned right now across portfolios, um, it's at a very low amount, a very low percentage. And it doesn't take a lot of rebalancing from different asset classes into gold to really move the price. And I think that's what we're seeing right now with central banks. They seem to be, as our market strategist Paul Wong recently wrote, totally price insensitive to the, to the gold price. They just keep buying when it's available. When you think about uh, institutional investors, we the best barometer for their interest and demand for gold is in the ETFs. And we track those every day. And they've been in net redemption globally for the, for the last year or so, which, which, is, which tells us that institutional investors are really not interested uh, in gold. Now, that's starting to change a little bit. We've seen some green shoots. Even our physical gold trust today, we raised over $35 million of new capital. So we'll be buying gold on Monday. So we are starting to see some green shoots. But I would say it's really been Eastern investors, including Chinese retail investors, that have really been underpinning the demand. And Western investors have largely ignored this rally, which we think uh, over time, especially if we start to see some heightened geopolitical risks, we're going to see a shift back to the safe haven. So do you think that that's just the geopolitical risk that will sort of catalyze Western investors, institutional investors, that is, to buy gold? And what is, I mean, historically, is there an allocation that we should think about in terms of the gold market? Western institutional investors typically are allocated this much to gold, and right now they are at this level? Yeah, so if you if you look at those numbers right now, we think it's somewhere in the sub-2% range in terms of their overall allocation. Uh, at the height of the last bull market, it was somewhere close to 8%. So we're way off of those of those cyclical highs. And as I said, it doesn't take a lot of capital to, to start moving around buckets. And I think the safe haven element of gold, if we have you know an escalation of Middle East tensions or whatever, that's clearly going to be, I think, one of the catalysts that will bring more Western money back into gold.